All right, guys, what's up? It's Brandon from Flesh and Blood Brothers. Coming at you with another deck tech video. Kano, Jakai of Aether. I was 24 minutes into making this video and my phone just shut off and deleted the video. So I'm doing this all over again, uh, but YOLO. So Kano, 99% of the time you're gonna be rocking Crucible of Aether Weave, Storm Striders, Metacarpus Node, Ragamuffin's Hat, and Fine Dell Spring Tunic, okay? In the sideboard, I have Alluvian Constellus and Waiting Moon. Why? This is only coming in against Icelander. Against Icelander, this is going to bring you up to AB4. And every time you, you pitch to reduce arcane damage, you're going to get a counter on this. Remove two counters, and you're going to Waning Moon for either two damage on your turn or three damage on their turn for free. So this allows you to chip away. I played an Icelander today at Armory. This did like 14 damage or something like that. So this is going to really chip away at that life total so you can get them into wildfire kill range. So this only comes in against Icelander. Otherwise, you're going to be rocking the OG Crucible of Aetherweave. Pay one, buffs your next arcane card damage by plus one. Storm Striders. Destroy it at instant speed. Play your next wizard attack action card, non-attack action card as though we're an instant. Why? Oh, Aether Wildfire, duh. You're going to have Aether Wildfire in your arsenal in your hand. You're going to pop your Storm Striders and say, hey, it's on your opponent's turn, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. So that's the point of Storm Striders. Metacarpus Node. As many resources you can handle whenever you play a card, pay one more, and it's going to do that much plus one. And at the beginning of your end phase, you're going to destroy Metacarpus nodes. So when you have extra resources to pump uh, two or three spells, you're going to get a lot of value out of this, and it's going to push through a lot of damage. Ragamuffin's Hat. Sneaky stuff here. Because it's at instant speed, you can prepay for Kano's activation. And before you banish the top card of your deck, you can switch the top card of your deck with a card in your hand. So if you desperately want to play the card in your hand at instant speed on your opponent's turn... This allows you to do that. So it's another mini um, Storm Strider's effect when you only have one card in your hand. So more on that later, but that's the that's the point of the hat. And then final Spring Tunic, every three turns, you're going to get a free resource. Uh, this is great for playing Toma Findel for free from your arsenal and getting life. So um, love it. And in Desperation, it does block for one. That saved my life more than once in Armories lately. So let's get into the deck. And the equipment will make more and more sense. Now, every Kano player on Earth is going to run three Aether Wildfires. What does it do? For two costs, you're going to deal four arcane damage to the opposing hero. When it's played on your opponent's turn, until the end of your turn, all action card effects that deal arcane damage do that much damage plus X, where X is the damage dealt by Aether Wildfire. So you're going to pump this with Crucible. You're going to pump this with Node. It's going to deal 6. You're going to play it at instant speed from your hand or arsenal with your Storm Striders. And you're going to say, hey, I'm dealing 6 to you. If you don't block any of this, everything I play until the end of this turn is going to deal plus 6. Um, so you can easily 40 to 0 one turn kill your opponent with a, with a strong Wildfire turn. Absolutely insane. Run three. Every Kano player is going to run three Blazing Aether. Why? It costs nothing. It's going to deal X arcane damage, where X is the amount of damage you've dealt to the hero this turn. So if you wildfire for six, then you can Blazing for six plus six. So you do 18 damage with these two measly cards. 18 damage is enough to win the game um, at certain life thresholds. If you do six, and then 12, that's 18. This is going to come in for 24. You've just 40 to 0 someone with three cards. All right. The potential in Blazing Aether is absolutely insane. Every Kano player is going to run three. Tome of Aether Wind. It lets you do two things. You can buff the next attack by one. You can draw a card. You can draw two cards, or you can buff the next thing by two. 100% of the time I see this, I draw two cards. Easy. 
Now you have more ammo for Kano shenanigans. So yeah, every time I see this, I draw two cards. Every Kano player is going to run three of these. Every Kano player is going to run three Aether Spindle. Why? It's insane. Let's say you play Aether Wildfire and deal four damage. Now you can Spindle. It costs two, deals four, but it would do eight on a Wildfire turn. Now you can opt eight cards, dude. You can look at the top eight cards of your deck and get your perfect Kano combo going and kill your opponent from 40 to zero. It's hap it happens every time you play. Not every game, but like every armory event, you will one turn kill someone. It's crazy. Aether Spindle is insane for this. So three red Aether Spindle, for sure. Now, I run three red Voltic Bolt. Not every Kano player will have three Voltic Bolt in their main deck. I do because my meta is rampant with Icelanders, Oldhams, and everything running AB3. So what this does is cost two, deals five. So if, let's say, if my whole turn is I pitch a blue, Crucible of Aether Weave, Voltic Bolt, that's six Arcane damage, good enough turn for me. Chip damage, get your opponent down to 20-something, Wildfire and like two more cards will just kill them instantly. So um, that's why I run three Voltic Bolt in my main board. Three Aether Dart. It's free. It does three arcane damage to any target. So if they have allies such as Dromai, you can deal three arcane damage to dragons. Uh, you can kill dragons or you can just go to the face with it. It's, it's a really fun card to banish off the top with Kano because then it's just an instant three on most likely your opponent's turn to just really chip away at them and catch them off guard. Now, I have two Cindering Foresight in my main board. Not every Kano player is going to have this. I love it because when it's not your turn, you play it as an instant. And then it says the next card you deal arcane damage with does that much plus one, and then you opt three. So you slap this down in instant speed, you opt three, you find the perfect card to banish with Kano, you pitch a blue, you get that card of your choice and just go crazy on them. So that's why I like considering Foresight. And I like two of them. I'm comfortable with two. And Emeritus Scalding. This is a crazy card to combo with Cindering Foresight. Whoa, look at that art. Synergy, synergy. So what does Emeritus Scalding do? It costs two. And you're going to deal four damage to the hero. But if it's played on your opponent's turn, instead it's going to deal six. And like that too, if you pitch a blue, you have enough resources to crucible this. So seven, and if you did Cindering Foresight, that's eight arcane damage at instant speed on your opponent's turn. That can be a sneaky kill sometimes. So that's why I like two Meredith Scolding out of nowhere. Now, yellows. These cards are insane. Every candle player is gonna have three yellow Toma Fiendel. What does it do? For the cost of one, you draw two cards. So if you Kano banish this, bam, it is the speed I'm drawing two cards for only one resource. What I like to do is put this in my arsenal, pay with my tunic counter resource, bam. Uh, let's say I have like two cards in my hand, I'm gonna draw two more cards, and now I'm gonna gain four life. I usually gain about eight life per game for my tomes from arsenal, which is nice, because Kano only starts at 30 health. So I love this for the card draw and the life gain. It's amazing. Lesson and Lava. Lesson and Lava costs one. It does three arcane damage base. And whatever damage it deals, you search your deck for a wizard card with cost less than or equal to the damage dealt by Lesson and Lava. So there's uh, this is a combo enabler. Um, you know, if you've done a lot of damage already, throw it on the Lesson and Lava. Get a Blazing Aether and just go crazy on them. Uh, use this to grab a Sonic Boom. Uh, basically, just any card you need on demand on top of your deck. Insane. Three of those. Sonic Boom. Probably my favorite card in the game of Flesh and Blood right now. Every Kindle player is going to have three of these. Cost two. Deals three. When it deals damage, you look at the top card of your deck. If it's a Wizard non-attack, you banish it and then play it for that many less resources where X is the damage dealt by Sonic Boom. So I had an inc insane game where I did an Aether spindle, spindle opted 9, and then I found three Sonic Booms and a Blazing Aether. So I went, bam, 
Sonic Boom. Reveal a Sonic Boom. Play it for free. Reveal a Sonic Boom. Play it for free. And then, bam, Aether Wildfire to kill you. Or, sorry, Blazing Aether to kill you. Uh, so Sonic Boom is another crazy combo card. My favorite card in Flesh and Blood right now. Insane. I have two Chain Lightning. Not every candle player is going to have this main deck or even in their deck at all. I love it. Here's why. Cost one. It says you may play your next wizard on attack as though it were an instant. So it's got Stormstrider vibes. If you got, if you've already destroyed your Stormstriders and they're still alive, and you know you have another wildfire in your arsenal. Here we go, boy. We're going. We going at it again. So this allows you to have some really crazy wide turns, and. If you've already played another Wizard on Attack this turn, this is going to deal three da three damage as well. So, not only does it allow you to cast more spells, it also will most likely do three damage as well. So that's why I have it at two. Yummy, yummy, yummy. All right, we're looking at the blues now. The blues are very important because Kano's ability costs three to do that banish and play at instant speed. So, Gaze the Ages, one of my favorite blues. Why? It's free. You're going to opt two. And if you've already played another wizard non-attack action, this goes in your hand when it resolves. So let's say you've already played a spell at instant speed. Now you can gaze the ages. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Get the perfect Kano card on top. Put this in your hand. And now you have the three resources to banish it and play it at instant speed. So gaze the ages is a combo enabler. It is just a lot packed in one card. Three every time. Potion of Deja Vu. I run two, again, because I have a lot of Guardian and AB3 in my meta. So this is another mini Storm Shriders effect. If you have the perfect card that you want to play in your opponent's turn at instant speed in your hand, you can pitch it. So like if it's a red, you can pitch the red and then pitch a blue for Kano. So you have one floating and at instant speed before Kano resolves. You put that card you desperately want on top of your deck and then bam, Kano banishes it. And you can play it at instant speed. Um, so this is a combo enabler. Great card. I have two. Every single Kano player is going to have three energy potion in their deck. At instant speed, you're going to gain two resources. So if you have two energy potions out and a wildfire arsenal and storm striders up, anytime your opponent has like one card or less in his hand, you're going, you're going to kill them. You're going to kill them with... If you have like three blues in your hand, two energy potions in the field, and storm striders with a wildfire and arsenal, you win the game. So, insane card, run three. Uh, I run two Voltic Bolt blues in my deck. Not every Kindle player is going to run these at all. But what I like about it is, again, it costs two, so you can Crucible and deal four, whatever. Um, and it's also blue, so I understand if you don't run this, I have two. Aether Dart. It's a blue, free, one damage. So flipping over a free one damage is whatever, but it, during a wildfire turn, it's a free, uh, I don't know, five or six, depending on the day. So good card, good economy, good blue. Zap. Oh, again, it's any target. So you can also kill those freaking pesky Aether Ashwings with it as well. Zap. Another free one. You never know when you have a wildfire turn. You flip this over. That's fine. It's free. Go go for it. So three of those. Scalding Rain at three. It's pretty good. It only costs one. It does two damage. And it's a blue. So decent card. And again, a lot of these blues are just to pay for Kano's ability. Reverberate. This one's kind of sneaky. It costs one. Deals one. But... If it deals damage, you can play a wizard non-attack from your hand at instant speed. So sometimes I like to crucible this for two. And then I can put a sonic boom from my hand at instant speed into play and just start <coughs> excuse me, start going crazy. So this is another mini combo enabler and a blue. So pretty cool. For bolting bolt. Not every candle player is gonna have this. I have it for now. This might be on the chopping block. But what it does is one arcane and you opt one. So it's like a mini Aether Spindle. You can deal one arcane. And then if you're on your wildfire turn and you're desperate for that one final card that'll that'll do it in, you can look at the top of your deck. 
If that's not the one, put it on the bottom and you have another chance. Or you can opt one and make sure you have the perfect target for if you have a you to make sure you have a blue on top of your deck. So if you have the perfect red in your hand, you can swap it with Ragamuffin's hat and you're good to go there. And three blue aether spindle. Every candle player is gonna run three blue aether spindles. Um Awesome card, cost two, does two, but you can pump it up to three if you want, and then you're gonna opt that many. So opting is insane in Kano, so that's why every Kano player runs three spindles in blue and red. All right, that's the main deck, all right? All right that's the main deck, 60 cards. You always wanna play the lean 60 cards because you are essentially a combo deck, but also you can have those turns where you just deal tall arcane damage and chip away at your opponent. So, in my sideboard, I have three Aether Flare. Aether Flare costs one, does three, and then next card you play, next card you play with an effect that deals arcane damage, instead deals that much plus X, where X is the da damage dealt by Aether Flare. So, kind of like a mini wildfire, you throw this out, if they take the three, okay, cool, I'm going to now Voltic Bowl for eight or something. So, it's good to... Um, really get in there and I bring this in against people who run less than AB3 because then I know um, that they'll be taking a lot of damage that turn. And I also have it in blue. Um, I, I bring this into main board, um, replace those foreboding bolts maybe or something else. But again, this does one, but you can pump it up to two and then it'll buff your next attack by that much and it's a blue. So does pretty good work. Snapback. Um, a lot of guys run this main board. It's a one, does one arcane. But if you put another wizard on attack, you can play it as it were an instant. So if it's your wildfire turn and this is your in your hand, you can just throw this out there for maybe five damage for one resource. So I, I see the value in this. So blue snapback, uh, pretty cool card, uh, pretty versatile. And then I got three Dampens here. Dampen is only for the draw my match because it costs two, but it deals four damage to any target, not target hero. So this will help you kill those uh, big, big hardy dragons that have a lot of health. Uh, so yeah, these only come in against the draw my match. I'll probably, maybe I'll turn these Aether Flare Blues into Singes or something because I do need Singes for the draw my match because right now all I have is Dampen and Darts to deal with dragons. But basic idea of the deck is to chip away, chip away, chip away and survive with tome life gain and good blocking because a lot of your cards block for three. And then what you're gonna do is when your opponent's around 20 something health, you'll have a wildfire and arsenal, pop your storm striders and go to town and kill them. So, um, it's a very fun deck to play, very hard to get your head around. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and uh, if you'd like to start playing Kano. I'm learning a lot from the Fab Discord Kano channel. Shout out to those guys. They've taught me a lot over the past few weeks. And like I said, pretty much every armor I bring this to, I have a 40, 40 plus damage one turn kill turn with Storm Shredders and Wildfire and Blazing Aether or Sonic Booms whatever have you, less than lava. So the deck is insanely powerful. If you do not, if, if your opponent ever empties it, if your opponent has no cards in his hand and you have this in your arsenal with Storm Striders, you win the game. You just need like three or four blues in your hand. If you have energy potions, then you will guaranteed win. It's, it's, it's insane. So a lot of fun to play, very cerebral and competitive. So hope you enjoyed this deck tech. I know we've been playing a lot. Uh, I know we've been putting out a lot of gameplay videos, but I really wanted to get this deck out into the world. And he, you know, even now it has room for growth. My sideboard isn't the best. It's not optimal, but the core is there. The core is there. You can do some insane things with this deck. So hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, please like subscribe, help the channel grow. We're trying to get to 200 subscribers. And this is Brandon, and I'll see you in the next video.